lots to talk about in a short time. So I just want to talk about your life and your career, and it's been immense. I mean, what do you got? 17 albums and uh, Billboard Top 200, Grammy Award winner, Oscar nominated guy. Come on, what a life, huh? Mm -hmm. Been a nice ride. <laughs> been a nice ride. Yeah. Uh, watched your documentary, loved it, of course. Um, and I, I love the the uh, documentary. Your sister's story. Uh, let me start off by saying what you first say in the top of the story, the very first thing you say is uh, serendipity is your favorite word. It's a story of your life. And I actually looked it up. And the dictionary says the word serendipity means the occurrence and development of events by chance in a happier, beneficial way. And knowing your story now in the documentary, fabulous, right? Yes. Yeah. But I also like the sound, the sound of the word. It's beautiful. Yeah. Serendipity just, just flows, you know, it's a good sounding word too. It is, yeah. Yes. So tell us the story about your sister. She says that you uh, actually invented a, an instrument for yourself to play when you were a kid. I thought it was pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, uh, she remembered that story and... Uh, <laughs> It's the memory of your sister, you know, things that sometimes I don't remember. But I've always liked sounds, you know, and the piano came to me as you as you saw on the documentary. And uh, I just love it, you know, and uh, when you talk about the, I don't know what she said I was playing, but who knows? And uh, I like that, the sound of the bell, bells in churches and, yeah. you know, I, you know, there's a lot of percussion in Brazilian music. Yes. So we are surrounded by percussive sounds, and uh, so I've always liked that, too. I just loved the sounds and the sounds of music. Yeah. She was talking about uh, you began playing little jars with different amounts of water in each one with a spoon, and then you would sing and, and play these little jars. And I thought, how cool is that? I wonder where you got that from. Imagination, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, very much. Magical sounds, right? Yeah. 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 And then you also, uh, as a child, you had a bone disease, so you, you weren't out there playing football with kids and stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, you were taking care of yourself. Your mom was taking care of you, and she actually got you a piano. What age was that, do you think? Uh, where was that? No, how, what age were you, do you think, when she got you a piano? I would say uh, six years old, six or wow. seven. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. talk about learning the classics and stuff? Yes. I, I, my mother found a teacher in Brazil. And a uh, lovely woman named Isabel. Uh -huh. And she taught me the fundamentals of music. And and then we started with the classical music. And I love I loved the sound of the piano, too. And I remember that piano, too. Yeah, fabulous. And you also talked about right piano. Yeah. And you were, you're also saying that maybe you were the, one of the first people in Brazil to receive penicillin back in the day. True. True. Because, you know, I had the osteomyelitis. Uh, I was born in 41, so this was like 43 or 44, just before the ending of the Second World War. And my father was a doctor, in, uh, <clears throat> and uh, so we were able to get penicillin. I was one of the first people to take it in Brazil, and that saved my life and saved my leg as well. Wow, man. Yeah. And you said you talked about your chums. I mean, what a learning experience. You, you referred to it, as you said, like you, it, it had the feeling like you were in Paris in the 30s uh, with your buddies uh, because you were. Oh, that's later now. Yeah, yeah, way much later. No, yeah. No, yeah, way later. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because we we're playing in this club in uh, the whole scene in the late uh, late 50s and early 60s was um, Ipanema in Copacabana, this Rio de Janeiro. Yeah. And uh, so that's when Bossa Nova started. Yeah. And Antonio Carlos Jobim, João Gilberto. And so there was this club that I worked on it called the Bottles Bar, which is in the documentary as well. It is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that was really the kind of uh, the place that uh, I, you know, I made the analogy was the 30s in Paris because we had architects, painters, sculptors, uh, uh, poets, uh, you know, wow. getting together there to listen to the music and also to talk about everything, yeah. about uh, cinema, you know, movies. And we're talking about Godard or Truffaut. At the same time, we're talking about Thelonious Monk. At the same yeah. time, you know, that kind of atmosphere of... Uh, very uh, 
creative and very intelligent people, you know. Yeah. It was a wonderful time. So that was when the bossa nova flourished. And, um, of course, Joe Beam's music. And, uh, again, the serendipity, I was lucky to be around that, to be there learning from the master and uh, <clears throat> and playing with, with different bands. Yeah. I'm talking about this is now uh, 59, 60, 61. Yeah. You also, speaking of serendipity, wasn't a friend of yours a dentist and a musician and he couldn't do a gig and so he asked you to fill in for him? Yes, that's right. He called me and he said, listen, there's this club in Rio called the Bottles Bar and I'm not going to be able to do it. Can you can you fill in for me? For me, it was like, wow, first time. Wow. Cross the bay, take the ferry, go to Rio and, and start playing. Yeah. How old were you then? 19. Wow, what an experience, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And then what happened after that? Didn't you after stay? That, you, you, yeah, you went to New York bands. eventually, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> different bands, you know, trio quartets. Uh, and finally, I put together a band. Uh, was a quintet. Uh-huh. Trumpet, saxophone, piano, bass, and drums. And that was the Bossa Nova concert at Carnegie Hall. Wow, uh, New York City. November of 62. So this November, now, uh, 60 years. Wow. And uh, we all came, you know, very excited to be, to come to United States and New York and Carnegie Hall. And uh, <clears throat> and getting there, um, meeting my all my idols, you know, there was Stan Getz and Dizzy Gillespie and Horace Silver. And that's when I made the record with Cannonball Adderley. So that was my first experience, you know, playing with this quintet at Carnegie Hall. In New York City. In New York City, that's wow. right. Yeah. And then you moved on from there. I understand through the documentary you were going to come return to Brazil, but somebody else, another musician said, no, hang out with me and let's do an album together. It was uh, Cannonball Adderley, the great yeah. alto saxophone. Yeah. He, I went to see him at Birdland, and uh, which was the temple of jazz in New York then. Yeah. And he said, man, let's, why don't you stay another week and let's make an album. And I said, wow, I couldn't believe that. And uh, so I made an album with him, an incredible musician, and uh, had a wonderful time with him. Yeah, yeah. And then you started, you, when did you get your band together, Brazil 66? So after Carnegie Hall, we went back to Brazil. <laughs> we went back to Brazil. And uh, so here comes 1964. And we had the coup d'etat, you know, we had like a militaries taking over, it was yeah. a mess, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I said, you know, I, I need to get out of here. And uh, I want to go to the United States and uh, put together another band. I had a friend of mine, he was my, uh, <clears throat> he was the best man of my wedding. Oh. And a dear friend, and, and he used to work at the, Brazilian Foreign Office, and I asked him, says, I need your help. Uh, I need some airline tickets, a little money. I want to go to the States, and I want to start a career there. I want to... He told me, say, you're crazy. Do you know anybody there? I said, no, but just help me with that, which he did against Serendipity. Right. And I came in uh, November of 64. I came into uh, United States to Los Angeles because he had a friend here. He was the general consul of Brazil here. Right. And, um, which helped me a lot. And I had this band, which was like uh, myself, uh, piano and drums and bass, and a young guitarist player and a singer. So we start playing in clubs around LA and start playing at private parties kind of thing, you know. It was a great jazz club here, uh, Shelley's Manhole, that belongs to the great drummer Shelly Man. And uh, so we worked there a lot. And a lot of people used to come and, and you know, see the band and uh, hear the band. And uh, one of those people were was uh, <clears throat> David Cavanaugh. He was the producer of... Uh, Nat, Nat King Cole and Peggy Lee, and wow. he was the Capitol Records. Mm-hmm. So we, we made a record for Capitol Records. Was that your first record? 
Uh, no, because I made a record for Atlantic Records before that. Okay. Uh, an instrumental again. Right. That's a different story, another story. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so we made the record, and then um, the band the, the band decided to go back to Brazil. And I said, I'm going to put together a new band, and um, which I did, and start again auditioning for record companies and uh, and and playing clubs in LA around LA. You've done and, a lot of nightclubs. You've I'm sorry? Had a, you've done a lot of touring and a lot of uh, club acts worked, right? Yeah, and uh, by then we're just auditioning here. And we had done the album for Capital, and uh, one of the one of the one day came uh, walked in several record companies. In those days, it was very common to hear go out and hear bands. And one day, walked in Jerry Jerry Moss and Herb Alpert, A and M, and they saw the bands. They loved the sound, and they said, "You know, can you join us? Uh, we're just starting a label." And I liked them a lot, and I said, and then that was it. So end of '65, and uh, made the record for them in '66, and that was the beginning, the first big door that opened and for us, for me. Right. And uh, they were very instrumental in 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 helping that happen. Yeah. Because you know the deal one of us was huge, so we opened shows for them. We traveled with them all over the United States. And then we had our first hit. Uh, Mashkinada, which was a big hit all over the world, and so that was the beginning. Yeah, and you just kept on going from there. You haven't slowed down since, have you? <laughs> no, and we're very, still very close friends. I was going to ask your relationship with oh, yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, because he married one of my singers, Lonnie. Yeah, and so we're very close friends. We, we, he lives here in LA too. Yeah, yeah. it's been a good journey. I, I bet. So. Uh, Bossa Nova, the, you know, that whole idea, when did that come about and how you fell in love with that style of music, didn't you? Oh, yeah, because that was uh, that was fresh. That was new. You know, the harmonies, the, dance of love, the melodies, yeah. no, the, the, the melodies, the 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 harmonies and the music of uh, most important composer, Antonio Carlos Jobim, and he... Uh, he influenced a lot of musicians and singers all over the world. That's mm -hmm. when Stan Getz did the album Desafinado, and then you know the girl from Ipanema and all that stuff. Yeah, the girl from it was just a great time. I mean, he wrote eight hundred songs at least. Wow. I, I, yeah, oh, it was not like a one hit. There was many, many incredible songs that are popular today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've worked with so many people, Sergio, like different styles of artists too, right? Not right. just jazz, but so many different people. Like people like John Le Legend, for example. Oh, that's recently. Yeah, he's a yeah. wonderful singer, wonderful composer, and uh, it's great. So it's common. Now we're talking now. This was yeah, yeah. But then you know, in those days, there was a lot of TV. So I did a lot of uh, TV shows with Freddie Astaire and uh, so many. You know, Bob Hope and uh, so many other great artists. You know. Yeah. Is there anybody yeah. you never played with, Sergio, that you wish you had of? Well, many, of course. <laughs> <laughs> many. Yeah. 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 I like so much of your music, like Fool on the Hill, Look of Love. That stuff is yeah. just, you're classics, Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah. They yeah. Are great melodies. You know, again, you're talking about you know, McCartney and Burt Bacharach. Exactly. You know, those, right? those are great melody writers. Yeah. Which I, I kind of miss these days, you know. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, they are. So is John Legend, by the way, and Stevie Wonder, and you know, I name you name it. You have played with them all. In 1983, you also had a hit, uh, "Never Gonna Let You Go," right? That's right. That's How did right. that come about for you? That, that melody came to me as a demo. Demo, uh, you know, people send you songs. Yeah, and I heard that melody. I said, "Wow, that's a beautiful, beautiful melody." And uh, and uh, but I was looking. I had to. To have a guy singing, because I had the two girls all my life, I still do, which I love that sound. Yeah. And a friend of mine introduced me to Joe Pizzullo, a young singer here in LA. And uh, so we recorded that song, became a, a huge hit all over the world. And uh, Barry Mann and Cynthia Weil. 
And again, uh, I love that. People love that song everywhere. Oh, it's huge. And I remember the story that he came in to do, probably do a demo for you, and you just said, let's cut it. Your, your voice, yeah. voice is perfect. Well, it was not, no, 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 no. Joe, I met him, and I loved the voice. And uh, we went to the studio and recorded. No, he did no demo for me. When I heard his voice, I said, that's it. That's and it. I had at the time... Uh, the engineer was Bruce Redine, who's a fantastic sound engineer, yeah. and many other great musicians like Robbie Buchanan that did the arrangement and play keyboards. And uh, so it was just a great encounter of musicians yeah. and singers. And that was a, just a great song, period. It is a great song. Everything starts with the writing, right? I don't I'm care sorry? if it's a screen. Everything starts with the writing. If it's a song, a poem, a book. A, oh, the a song. Screenplay. This song is... Yeah. Song is the most important thing for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanna, you wanna keep that on your dreams. You wanna, you wanna whistle. You wanna just remember, you know. And uh, I miss that actually. You know, Do you? great songwriting. Yeah, yeah. You helped uh, a movie too called Rio. Yes, I wrote the soundtrack was uh, <clears throat> with uh, John Powell, it's a great uh, arranger, music, uh, uh, film composer. And uh, Carlinos Brown, and we worked that here in LA. We did Rio One and Rio Two. Yeah. And the song that I wrote was nominated for uh, an Oscar. Unfortunately, yeah. we didn't win. Congratulations, did, though. And well, and, how did you get your head wrapped uh, around that idea? Did you get the concept from the the writer about what that looks? Well, like no, you get you get or? from it's a, a totally different story than making a record. First, you see a uh, storyboard. Right, and the movie was uh, was written and produced by Carlos Saldanha, yeah, a young Brazilian filmmaker. Yeah, and uh, so he showed me the story, storyboards, what's happening with the birds, and the, so that that's what the inspiration comes from, you know. The so you have to follow the the story, the story yeah. is the thing, you know, and then you try to put songs with the story. Yeah, how long did that take you? Do you think? Oh, it took us Rio 1, maybe a year and a half, almost two, and then Rio 2, again, a year and a half. Yeah. And you like to experiment with different, like I said before, different styles of music, different artists. you got a lot of variety in your soul, don't you? Yeah, because music is so, you know, it's it's, it's so diverse. I yeah. love music, music from other countries, too, you know. Yeah, and it's it's great when you hear music from India or China or Japan. Yeah, yeah. And tell us about the famous story about the unknown actor who helped you build uh, your dream studio. <laughs> yeah, Harrison, sweetheart. He was a Harrison great, Ford, great guy. Yeah, yeah, he, uh, yeah. He did a great job. It was funny because he he came in and said a friend of mine. Said that you're looking for a carpenter, you, and, you know. I said, yeah, I'm gonna. I would like to build a recording studio here in my house, and and he told me later that he never built any recording studios. And uh, <laughs> he's an incredible guy, you know, very, very, very intelligent and very sensitive and very funny, and uh, and a great carpenter. You know, it was amazing the job he did, and uh, we had a wonderful time working together. And I'm so happy that John Scheinfeld that directed the the documentary and did a great yeah. job also was able to have Harrison and because it's it's such a you know amazing thing. In those days he was not yet the famous artist that he is today. And yeah. the, the the fact that uh, he built my recording studio is a, it's fantastic. And he also says he gives you credit because he said, I did Sergio's studio and then that got me more work. So he you know, it maintained some work for him a little while later. You know what I mean? He got a few more gigs from that one uh, gig, uh -huh. with you, which helped him out during the time he needed it, right? Right. It was great to see him in the documentary, though. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Any other highlights come to mind for you in the top of your top of your head, right off the top of your head, without thinking too much about it? You've had so many, Sergio. I know. Right? I mean, as I, as I told you, it's been a great ride, you know? Yeah. Lucky to work with incredible people from different areas, different, uh, you know, meeting John Scheinfeld, for instance, here at the house, you know, you never know when you're going to do a documentary about your life. I was going to 
how's it going to turn out, you know? And uh, we had a wonderful time. We're very good friends, close friends. Oh, it's and, great. Um, it really is great. Yeah, yeah, and it's just uh, he did an incredible job again. So it's all of it's in the key of joy. In the key of joy is the name of it. That's, that's right. That's I love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think, Sergio? For you, what do you attribute your longevity to? Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's hard. It's hard to say. It's so many components in that. I think, you know, working hard and trying to be innovative, but also, you know, again, serendipity is the good word that describes all of that. Luck to be at the right place and meet the right people at the right time and uh, all those things, you know, it's it's kind of, uh, it's kind of looking back and say, yeah, I've been very lucky, man. You know, it's uh, to have met incredible people from different areas and, and be able to work with them. Yeah. You know, so yeah, so it's a lot of components in that. Yeah, uh, I think it was the photographer Ansel Adams whose quote is, "Luck is where opportunity meets a prepared mind." And watching your documentary, Sergio, you were always preparing yourself for the next thing, the next adventure. I call the it. next yeah, adventure. Like yeah, yeah, right. Look at life like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. You know, it's like. Now we had the we just had, you know, the two years of a pandemic, yeah, which no. nobody expected, you know, and that's pretty hard. Right. And I think it was hard on everybody, on everybody all over the world. And and people were like, you know, including myself, we're locked in the house here. And uh now I'm starting to work and going back on the road. So are those you? things uh, are the yeah, are the surprises that uh that you're not ready for. And then you say, well, then you go through it. And I have a great family. I have a wonderful wife. She's a great singer yeah. and very good friends. So we just hang in, you know, we yeah. like, uh, so you're actually, you've got uh, some gigs. You have some gigs lined up then. Moving yeah. Forward? Yeah. Moving forward. Yes, I do. You know, next year they're coming. I have, uh, I, I haven't been in Vancouver in a long time. Yeah. I remember working there at the beautiful theater. What is the name of the theater there? Uh, it could have been the cave. Huh? The cave? No, a theater. A beautiful oh, theater. The theater, maybe. The Q huh? Queen Elizabeth Theater? Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. I remember yeah. playing that many, many times in the past. It was a lovely theater. Yeah. Yeah, we should, we should do. We played Canada many times, and I'm ready to go back and uh, yeah, so we'd love to see tour you. there. Yeah, yeah, next year. We'd love to see you. Well, it's good to know that you're still active. I knew you would be because you just don't slow down. You know, you were talking about Paul Gauguin, the artist, and I was watching your video and your documentary, and I thought, you know, I think part of it for you is like I you said how much you like that artist, and I like him too. I'm a painter, so I like that style as well, the colors and all that. But I also remember the story you mentioned that he went to Polynesia to paint those paintings, and for you it was part of the adventure of travel. Yes. Right? He was kind of very inspiring to me. Again, when I mentioned to you, you know, in Rio, we're like living that fantasy. So Gauguin was part of it, you know, Gauguin and, you know, all the all the Fellini, you know, yeah. Kurosawa. Kurosawa was like you know, such an important thing. When I saw, you know, I said, wow, Japan. I never thought I, I would go to Japan. I've been to Japan 60 times now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I go every year and I love it. And uh and they they like my music very much. And so it's one of those, wow, you know, I never thought I would go to, you know, anywhere. Yeah, well, you sure yeah. have. You, you just so, keep it yeah, going. We're, yeah. We're, but it's great when you have, uh, like I told you and tell you again, to have a great wife like I do. Yeah. And she's a singer in the band. So we travel together. That makes it nicer and, and easier. And uh, I have a great band, a young band. They play amazingly and... Uh, Great, great, you know, another great singer and the saxophone. And I mean, it's a wonderful band. And I enjoy it. I, I love, you know, playing, doing personal appearances. I mean, for me, that's the the great the great joy. That's where the juice is, right? Life, life shows. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You. Well, you know, thank my you. friend, I really want to thank you for your time today. The documentary is called Sergio Mendez in the Key of Joy. Love that. It's currently streaming on various platforms or available as an autographed DVD on Sergio's website, www.sergiomendezmusic.com. Sergio Mendez, 
Thank you so much, my friend, for being in the Jazz Spotlight today. It's been a pleasure, Ken, talking to you. And I hope to see you in Canada. See you soon, my friend. Keep smiling. You Thank soon. you, Sergio. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.